person is strong, smart, wise, intelligent, and motivated. And I wouldn't trade that version of me for anything. I'm at a point in my life right now where I'm okay with what I've been through, and I'm ready for what's to come. I understand that everything I went through built what I'm looking at in the mirror. And that person is strong, smart, wise, intelligent, and motivated. And I wouldn't trade that version of me for anything. Good evening, good evening. Thank you for joining Kava Ministries. Today is Thursday, the last Thursday of the month. I am so excited that you all are here joining us this evening. We are live. You can find us on YouTube channel, Kava Ministries YouTube channel. And also you can find us live at our uh, Facebook channel. I mean, I'm sorry, Facebook page. I'm so excited um, about what we're getting ready to do for the next, uh, I would probably say six weeks. And um, I want to share with you, we will start some of it today. Uh, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but um, we are just glad that you're here in Jesus' name with us. Again, this is Kava Ministries. Peace and blessings to you all. I hope and pray that you all had a fantastic Thursday. I know I did. Um, my Thursday was um, full. I don't have anything to complain about. Um, so, yeah, let's get started. This is Kava Ministries. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. We glorify you. We appreciate you for who you are. Father God, we thank you for the life that you've given us. Father, we ask you to allow this teaching, this ministry, Father God, that you've given us to be a blessing, that it will, that your word will go far and wide as we plant seed into fertile soil and that it will produce what you called it to produce. Father, we thank you. We ask you for every ear that is listening today, oh God, that their questions and answers will be will be answered. I mean, their questions and prayers will be answered, oh God, that healing and deliverance will start for them and that they will be stronger than what they started out to be. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Again, this is Kava Ministries. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for joining us today. You can find us on live on YouTube and Facebook. So the series that we are starting today, or we're starting it today, is more of an introduction. Today is the introduction, I would say a semi-introduction, a soft introduction uh, to the series, The Tamar Experience. Oh my gosh, Pastor, what are you talking about? What is the Tamar experience? I'm so glad you asked. I need a co-host sometimes. I, I crack my own self up. I laugh at myself. So we're going to talk a little bit about the Tamar experience. And as the week uh, goes on, you will hear more information uh, coming out as we um, market and send out information in regards to the Tamar experience. and um, yeah, you're going to have a personal invitation uh, from us about the Tamar experience. So the Tamar experience, you can find um, these particular uh, two individuals we'll be talking about. Both are named Tamar. One you'll find in Genesis uh, 37 and 38. And the other one you will find in 2 Samuel 13, 1 through 22. I'll say it again. Genesis 37 and 38. And the second one will, will you'll find in 2 Samuel 13 verses 1 through 20 through 22. And they're both in the Old Testament. Genesis is the first book of the Bible. So what we're going to do with this soft uh, introduction is kind of talk about the two stories of two remarkable women named Tamar in the Bible, each navigating through tumultuous circumstances. One faced uh, trials of a dysfunctional family after marrying into dysfunction, while the other one was brutally attacked. Both suffered uh, forms of abuse and mistreatment by men. And these stories echo the struggles of many women to even today. 
So for those of you who may think that um, some of the challenges that we go through as women now today are new. No, they're not new. The Bible lets us know there's nothing new under the sun. So even in the Bible, we find uh, recordings of um, women who were abused, uh, who were taken advantage of, and who was not cared for. So let me say this, um, not tonight, but throughout this series, well, maybe tonight too, uh, I just want to give a disclaimer that there may be parts of this information that are triggering to you. If so, that's fine. Um, at any given time, you can either mute or um, leave the podcast. Uh, we respect and honor that. Uh, throughout this series, um, except for tonight, we will have um, some professionals to talk about um, what trauma is and how it affects us spiritually, how it affects the soul, how it affects the emotions, and even our behaviors now if we don't uh, take care of it. So I want to put that out there, okay? So um, the focus among that we're going to, um, let me back up. The sole focus is not to deal with so much of the pain that these women endured, but it's about uh, how God and his compass and love use their suffering as a platform for helping heal and restore women. That's what this is about. Um, as we delve into their experiences, highlighting God's transformative power that brought them out of darkness into light. These conversations will take place because some of them will be conversations. A lot of them will be on this podcast. Um, we'll hear we'll hear different women uh, talk about um, maybe their own trauma. They'll we'll talk about the experiences of these two Tamars and how we can get healed from them and the difference between being healed and delivered because there's a big difference. And sometimes, sometimes, sometimes not on purpose uh, in the kingdom, we focus sometimes so much on the healing component, which is important, but in the healing, we forget about the, the deliverance and what deliverance looks like. I want you to pin that as you take your copious notes. What deliverance looks like and how we come through it because deliverance is moving. It is not stagnant. And we can, we have a tendency, and you'll hear me repeat this throughout the series, throughout this experience. Deliverance is never intended for us to look at what has fallen off of us or what has come out of us. We can see it, but we are to move through it and we are to go to our next destiny. And we are to live our lives empowered. We are to live our lives full of hope. We are to, to live our lives knowing that we have been delivered and set free through Jesus Christ himself. So this series um, is going to free you up. It's going to challenge you. It's going to affect you. You are going to feel something and have some type of emotional response from this series. And as I stated before, we're going to have some wonderful women. We're going to have open discussions. Um, as the information goes out and is being disseminated, you will know how to join us and um, listen in. And at some point, um, you'll be able to even hopefully ask questions. So we're excited about this. This is a God vision. Uh, we never do anything or present anything to the to anyone, the kingdom 
or to the world without God giving it to us. He is the steering wheel. He is he is the giver of all vision, all dreams. And he releases us and he places it, places it in our arms so that we can do what he has called us to do and to be able to operate in such a beautiful and safe space. And look how God has um, been able to use the internet. I remember people went crazy about the internet. Oh, it's, it's, of, this, it's of the enemy. It's horrible. It's this, it's that. But look how he has created a platform for us to be able to use, to teach, to preach, to minister, to help set people free and to draw them closer to God but no other way through this beautiful platform called the internet. <laughs> so I'm excited today. Thank you for all of those who are joining us. If you're, if you're not joining us live, hurry up, call somebody, tell somebody, and do me a favor, like, share, and subscribe. And every Thursday at 6.30, we will be here to meet you live. So let's jump into it. The first Tamar we're going to talk about is coming from Genesis 38. Genesis 38. Genesis is the first book of the Bible. Remember, we said we said that earlier, and I'll give you the other two scriptures that we're going to come from as, as well. Uh, so it's Genesis 38. Um, it's going to be our main thought. And I'll just kind of give you some background. It says we meet, we first meet Tamar in the Old Testament, Genesis chapter 38. And the first seemed seems centered on the story of Judah. So I'm going to talk about Judah a little bit. Judah was the fourth born among 12 sons of Jacob. The story uh, starts and begins after Ju Judah, son of Jacob, uh, conceives convinces his brothers to sell their younger brother and Joseph into slavery. And the story uh, of Joseph begins. And that starts, that's, that starts, that goes into Genesis 37. So I'm just kind of, I just want to give you a little background of where everything starts, who begots who and so forth. So as you're reading your Bible, sometimes when we get information before we read, and as we're reading, it can come back to us. Oh, yeah, I remember uh, that person was talking about that. Oh, okay, that's what that looks like. So um, we're going to kind of skip around a, a little bit and get to the main part here. Um, now, Tamar, well, no, let me let me back up for a minute. Um, Joda, uh, Judah leaves his family members behind and, and he meets up with the man and I'm going to pronounce his name wrong. I believe it's uh, Adalman or Dalman, A-D-U-L-L-A-M. Uh, and his name was also Hare, H-I-R-A-H. -H. And he was a Canaanite in the town, which means he was, he looked like you and I. <laughs> and there he marries the daughter of a Canaanite man. Judah's wife gives birth to three sons. One is named Er, not I, not A, not A I R, but E R, like E R, E R, you know. Who was the character? Wasn't it a cartoon character name? E R, E R. What was it? Okay, I'm digressing. Um, the oldest son of Judah. And then they had a second son. His name was Onan. I believe I'm pronouncing that right. And then third son was um, Shayla or Sheila, S-H-E-L-A-H. And in the very next verse, which is uh, Genesis 38 and 7, we're told about Judah who took a wife um, of his oldest son, Er, which is pronounced really, I see the pronounce the correct per, pronunciation is E-Y-E-E-R. And um, so that's where we're at with this point. And as we go on in the story, Tamar married, who was this daughter-in-law of Judah, marries 
heir. E E R. He, she gets married to him. Now, I'm gonna jump ahead a little bit because I'm gonna tell you something about the Bible that I love. I discover every time I read it. What I have discovered about the Bible is so true. It sets up. It sets us up for every question, every cir circumstance and situations we go through in our lives. I promise you I'm not digressing. I'm going somewhere. Stay with me. It sets us up for all of these things. So as we continue uh, in the series, this thing is going to read and sound like a TLC, I guess is TLC made for series TV program or series or something on uh, one of the uh, uh, TV channels where they have all the different series, I guess, BT. This is like a made for TV series. Both Tamar stories are. You're going to be like, what? Yeah, it's that deep. So it's interesting how the world finds, because somebody is getting this information from things that happen in the Bible. Life circumstances. They went to the Bible and found it and added their own little twist. Own little, some perversion in it. Some of it, some of it was already, the, the experiences were perverted. But they sold it to us and we think it's something new. And I'm telling you it's not. But it is interesting as we walk through this didactal journey, you will see and hear. And this might sound familiar to you. You might be like, oh, that's, that's like my cousin and them. They going through that or they went through that or, you know, my neighbor and them and girl to girl next door. Yeah, this, this is like, a family girl next door situation. This is what this is for real. This is this is this is that story. So um I want you to take it all in. Take it all in, okay? All right. So as we as we walk through this process, right? We're walking through the process. Um we talked about who was who, who was born or who. Um, now, the thing that happened to the firstborn, Er, he was the firstborn, but he was wicked. Oh, he was wicked, y'all. In the in 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 the in the Lord's sight, uh, he was not a good man. His heart wasn't right. He was verbally and emotionally abusive to his wife. And he didn't care. And he, he was wealthy. He had money. He had money. And he was so wicked that the Lord put him to death. He killed him because he was that wicked. Again, this is Genesis 38. 38. Genesis 38. Old Testament, first book of the Bible. And this is Kappa Ministries. Happy Thursday. First introductory, soft, soft introduction to the Tamar experience. And thank you all for joining us. Um, thank you, First Lady. I see you. I love you. Thank you so much. Um, and everyone else who is joining us, thank you. So this sounds like a TV show. M money. It doesn't say if he was good looking. Let's just say for giggles, he might have been good looking. But his wife was beautiful. We know that. Because she was a sister. But she was really good looking. Mm-hmm. Um, and he didn't treat her right. And not only did he treat her right, but it was a lot of people he didn't treat right. And I'm not going to go because this is such this is just the soft opening. I can't give you everything Then you won't be. It, it'll be all gone. I want I want you to come back. But this this story, 
this situation, I don't want to say it's a story because stories are fictional. This is nothing fictional. This is true. True. This experience was is so deep. And it's so relative to 2024. And as you listen to it and if you read it, you'll be thinking, how in the world is this woman going to survive? As women, we get ourselves into situations, situationships that we shouldn't be in, some of us. And we put our trust in someone, our family, you know, uh, insists on us or nudges us to get married or someone is presented and we don't do our homework. We don't find out anything about their background. We just, you know, it's either, well, back then it could have been prearranged, but we don't do, we don't do enough. We don't get enough information. We don't fact find. And we get into this marriage situation and we do it because this person has money. We're looking at all the glitz and the glamour and all. Oh, he, girl, he got a car. He got this. Oh, it's nice. And he got a Bentley or whatever your favorite car may be. He, 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 he flashing cash and, you know, and he's just all of this and he's promising you the world, but you don't realize that this person could be a narcissist. What? He look, he he presents himself, or even she in some cases, hmm, present themselves to be one thing, huh? And find, and then you discover, hmm, they are something altogether different, and this is not what I signed up for. What have I gotten myself into? And not only have what have I gotten myself into, but how am I going to get out of it? Deliver me, God. And there are some situations that only prayer and fasting will bring you out of. I'm gonna say it again. There are only some there are situations that only two things that can bring you out of it: prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting. I want to go back to the word deliverance for a moment. Deliverance means, one of the words mean, it's a state of being saved from a painful and bad experience. Oh, I'll read it again. The state of being saved from a painful and bad experience. Yeshua, they all have the same general meaning. When we say the word Yeshua, they all have the same general meaning. <laughs> he said he delivers us. He's our salvation. He rescues us and he relieves us. Basic meanings. Deliverance is a type shadow of Yeshua. Mm hmm. Yes. Deliverance is also meant to cast out evil spirits. Demonic spirits that have over overtaken people, causing them to have negative behaviors, feelings and experiences. This is what deliverance does. It takes it casts all of that out. Deliverance is a release of the oppressor or from the oppressor. But the freedom is deliverance from being oppressed. So it comes to full circle what deliverance is. So I don't want you all to get deliverance and healing mixed up because they are significant. And, and in their significance, um, they have they they operate differently and um because they operate differently your experience will be different powerful but different powerful but different 
I hope you're excited about this uh, series. I am. I am definitely excited about it. So what I would like for you to do, if you are interested in um, receiving the link in the next few weeks for uh, to be a part of the Tamar experience, hey, you can drop it in. You can drop your email either in the live, the chat, or you can contact us, kavaministries at gmail.com, K-A-V-A-M. I N I S T R I E S Kava Ministries at gmail.com. Kava Ministries at gmail.com. Let us know. I'm interested in um, being a part of the listening or to attend um, the series where we will have discussions from powerful, powerful women. I'm telling you, y'all don't want to miss this thing. It's going to be powerful. It's going to be earth shaking. We're going to talk to women in the kingdom who will give us so much knowledge, God knowledge, um, who will give us um, not just God knowledge, but spiritual information um, talking about these two women and how their experience with God brought them out. Some may share their own testimonies. We don't know. We're going to let God have his way. Yes, he is a rescuer and he delivers us. Yes, 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 pastor. Yes, he does. Yes. So I would love for you to attend. I would like for you to be a part of it. It will. Mm, it's going to be podcasted. So either way, if you if you if you sit in on the live one, great. It's, it will be re-recorded, and take it back and listen to it and start having an open conversation. So this can transform you. This is to transform you. Mm, thank you, Lord. Uh, we're getting ready to end. I don't want to go too much further over time. I'm, I'm always sensitive to the time. But the Bible says, and they overcame by the by their testimonies, by the Lamb of the... the and they overcame mm, by their testimonies, by the blood of the Lamb and by their testimonies. Who are they? The body, the saints, the believers... What did they overcome? Their hurt, their pain, their disappointments. They were being transformed and they were open. They were transparent. They overcame it. What is a testimony? An event, a story that happened or an event that you're talking about? That you weren't supposed to talk about? That you were never, ever, ever supposed to share. But now God has delivered you, healed you and delivered you so that they can, you can share with and share it with others and they can, we can have more overcomers. And more overcomers, because the more we overcome, the stronger we are in Christ Jesus. And this is not just for believers. This is for any woman, teenage girl. Male, I don't care who you are, what your status is, what I care about is that you have this experience. What I care about is that through these experiences and testimonies and conversations is that you don't see the people, but you see the God. That you don't hear their voices, that you hear the voice of God, that you hear the deliverance, that you hear the that you hear the healing power of Jesus Himself. That's what I care about. Amen. Again, this is Kavan Ministries Thursday night podcast, our soft opening of the Tamar experience. 
Again, if you're interested, if you have a comment, if you want to donate, we take all donations. Hallelujah, because it, we have to be able to uh, pay the cost to run ministry. It is Kava Ministries, K-A-V-A-M-I-N-I-S-T-R-E-S at gmail.com. Kava Ministries at gmail.com. You can also leave a comment on our Facebook page or on our YouTube. Leave it. If you want, if you want to be a part of this, please leave your information and we will make sure that we get back to you. Please like subscribe, join, and share. Okay? This is Kava Ministries. I want to leave you with our mantra. We have a theme even for this particular, um, hmm, find it. But this particular, um, I think we do. <laughs> it's somewhere to find it. Uh, we do have something to lead, to take us out. Um, for, for us to, to, to take us out tonight uh, as we close this podcast I hope you listen to the words and I hope that you able to study the scriptures that we gave you Genesis I'll go back over them real quick because I don't want to lose anybody I want everybody to take their copious notes and um, to be able to find the information that we have given you. So let me go back up here and pull it back up for you. The first Tamar we're talking about is in uh, Genesis 38. Genesis 38. Yes, yes, yes. And then the second one is in 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel um, 13, 1 through 22. Genesis 38. I'm sorry, Genesis 37 and 38, 2 Samuel 13, 1 through 22 are the two focuses of where we're coming from. As God has given us a vision, we're going to move forward in that vision. Peace and blessings to you all tonight. And I'm going to take you out with uh, our, one of our words of encouragement. I'm at a point in my life right now where I'm okay with what I've been through, and I'm ready for what's to come. I understand that everything I went through built what I'm looking at in the mirror, and that person is strong, smart, wise, intelligent, and motivated, and I wouldn't trade that version of me for anything. I'm at a point in my life right now where I'm okay with what I've been through, and I'm ready for what's to 